very good morning to all of you uh today <laughs> i would like to discuss regarding clues to the diagnosis of uh, recurrent episodic vertigo vertigo is a common uh, problem it needs an organized approach despite of uh, all investigations history remains the uh, important uh, aspect of um, it, uh, going to the diagnosis bppv migraine and vascular vertigo are rem- uh, still major causes of the vertigo anxiety and depression uh, looks like uh, associated causes of the vertigo uh, rather than the true cause of the vertigo uh, classification is good central versus peripheral but uh, pre- mode of presentation acute or chronic or recurrent or positional or non positional is also important now this is the theoretical classification of the uh, recurrent episodic vertigo in peripheral labyrinth and we have bppv minors paralympic fistula vestibular paroxysmia vestibular neuritis gogan syndromes autosclerosis hyperviscosity cp engel cyst and urinoma in central and peripheral causes are um, basilar migraine benign paroxysmal vertigo the childhood benign recurrent vertigo vbi and aic ischemia in purely central it is a vestibular epilepsy room tilt illusion paroxysmal dysarthria uh, family episode ataxia and paroxysmal ocular tilt reaction i would like to discuss most of this first of all bppv bppv as we all know uh, the, the it is a brief attacks of the rotatory vertigo and concomitant nystagmus elicited by uh, rapid changes of the head movement posterior canal bppv is more common than horizontal canal bppv and uh, anterior canal bppv is least common uh, rare variety it is diagnosed by dick solfect test and retinal head trunk tilt test it is commonly seen in 6 to 7 decade and female to male ratio is 2 gem 1 now pbpv uh, latency vertigo nystagmus begins one or more than one second after the head is tilted toward the particular position and it increase to the maximum in up to it lasts for up to 40 seconds and there is there is linear rotatory nystagmus fast phases towards the undermost ear reversal when patient uh, to return to the st- seated position vertigo and nystagmus uh, are in opposite direction but less violently so uh, this pbbb nystagmus and uh, vertigo is fatigable it uh, uh, occurs with three, three neuron reflex arc ampullo fugal stimulation of the posterior semicircular canal causes the excitation of the superior oblique uh, of the same and uh, contralateral inferior superior oblique contralateral inferior rectus muscles and both highs to move the downwards and uh, in slow phase and upwards in a fast phase so this is the when uh, right bppv when patient looks downwards there is a torsional down beating nystagmus or uh, torsional right beating nystagmus and when uh, we fix the gaze to, towards uh, opposite side there is uh, uh, there is a uh, eye movement towards the forehead for forehead due to the inclination of the superior oblique and inferior rectus muscles now coming to hbpv it is a 10 to 20% of the all patients of the bppv may be combined with the bppv due to inclination of the P, uh, angle of the pb uh, posterior canal and horizontal canal posterior canal uh, autolith may fall into the horizontal canal so transition is possible there are two variety of hbpp tra- canalolithiasis and cupulolithiasis and vertigo is only when patient is rolling the head from side to side uh, while supine position in hbp position and testing so linear horizontal nystagmus there is a linear horizontal nystagmus toward the undermost ear that is called geotropic in canalolithiasis variety which is of shorter latency and uh, last l- up, up to 1 minute and uh, then last it is last uh, larger than pbbv and in calor test one third of the patient shows the hsc paresis what i got acts are more severe than p variety and there is also associated with nausea it rarely fatigues and relapses are more frequent as distinct from b p b p b these attacks are not elicited by getting patient in or out of the bed or bending or extending the neck a typical variety of pbpb it is apogeotropical positional nystagmus it show, see see
This tank must last for more, uh, more than one minute and it depends upon the assumed head position rather than the net angle of the head rotation. Right ear affects most, um, uh, more than left ear. This figure shows, this is a patient in supine position with nose up. This is the uh, left, uh, left horizontal sensory canal. This is the free floating particle in the left horizontal sensory canal. And this is the uh, cupula. This is the axis of the cupula. When patient, we turn the head right side, 60 degree right side toward the right. Then the um, uh, final moment of uh, uh, free floating particle is like this. This causes the weak ampullofugal moment. And these are the weak nystagmus. When we turn the head 120 degree to the left, the uh, free floating particles moves toward the left side and it causes the more severe variety of the nystagmus, which is ampullopetal. And when we turn the head 120 degree toward the right, it causes the less severe variety of the nystagmus. This is a small video regarding horizontal canal, canal of lithiasis nystagmus. See, this is the left side beating. On opposite side, there is a less intensity. Now, this, is, this figure shows that same position with the nose up. And this is the ampullofugal canal uh, lithiasis type of HBPPV. When we turn the head right side 60 degree towards, there is a weak movement of the cupula. So, nystagmus like this. And opposite side, uh, nystagmus reverses the, the direction. This is apogeotropic type of nystagmus. On left side, lateral head rotation, there is a weak nystagmus. And turning the head towards right, the intensity of nystagmus increases. Now, anterior canal BPP is the rarest variety. In, uh, in positional test, it is a downbeat dorsal and toward the affected ear uppermost. Latency, duration and directional reversal is same as that of the P variety. In a, a BPPV, positioning maneuvers is this Dix Holpike head hanging position with the head toward the unaffected ear for ampullofugal stimulation and rapid uprighting of uh, the patient from this position results in ampullopetal stimulation and nystagmus. See, this is the free floating particle, 145 degree uh, head low position and when we bring the patient rapid up upright, this is the head hanging position, 145 degree. When suddenly we upright the head, uh, we sit uh, from in sitting position, patient gets nystagmus. So these are the characteristics of the three canal type of nystagmus. In posterior canal, in Dick Solpeck, this is a upbeating and torsional nystagmus. And uh, anterior canal is a downbeating and torsional nystagmus. On reversal, downbeating uh, in uh, posterior canal and upbeating on anterior canal. In horizontal canal, in Dick Solpeck, there is horizontal and in reversal, it is horizontal but in opposite direction. Coming to Meniere's disease, the triad of symptoms are their episodic vertigo, tinnitus and fluctuating hearing loss. In initial attack, patient feels initial sensation of the fullness of the ear, reduced hearing, occurrence or increase of the tinnitus, and which is followed by the rotational vertigo, posture imbalance, nystagmus and nausea after few minutes. Uh, female preponderance is there, 4 to 6 decade and positive family history is there. Uh, due to membrane rupture nerve palsy, there is a spontaneous nystagmus. In the beginning, there is an irritative type of nystagmus. And after a few seconds, it is a contra paralytic type of nystagmus. And uh, only horizontal type of nystagmus is there because of the involvement of the, all the three canals. In Lermois phenomenon, there is sometimes a transient improvement in hearing during the attack. It's called the Lermois phenomenon. And uh, it is the, uh, the diagnosis of meniasis uh, by Transtympanic echocochleography. In vertigo free interval, patients get early stage, there is no auditory symptoms, and typical flat SN type of audiogram is there. But in early stages, there is a low frequency hearing loss, and after late stage, there it becomes a high frequency. 
in a honeybird sign when uh, pressure applies to the external auditory canal patients feel uh, dizzy and uh, he, he, she has nystagmus imaging in image this is suggest that the uh, hypoplasia of the retrolabyrinth region and a hypoplastic vestibular aqueduct with a narrow external aperture in one variety of uh, meniere is to markins autolithic crisis it is a vestibular drop attack St it, uh, when patient feel that suddenly fall down then they were uh, the patient feel that they were being pushed to the ground or surrounding suddenly moved or tilted as distinct from the epileptic seizures no associated or, or loss of consciousness and a patient is able to stand up immediately coming to perilymph fistulas two varieties ascc type and autolithic type a variety of episodic or rotatory linear vertigo with snl or tinnitus and uh, ear pressure and ex especially following excessive physical activity trauma uh, or bearer trauma in ascc type of plf there is episodic rotatory vertigo and nystagmus frequently associated with the snl or tinnitus and ear pressure in autolithic type of vertigo there is a to and fro vertigo unsteady unsteadiness and gait ataxia oscillopsia is with a linear head motion and episodic vertigo is frequently induced by strenuous exercise lifting diving flying about of sneezing and coughing distressing vertigo and unsteadiness modulated by the head motion and head position in space now diagnostic aids in plf there is a <coughs> history history of head trauma is there pressure fistula test uh, hanibert sign vascular fistula compression of the both internal jugular vein gets vert uh, vertigo and nystagmus ct and mr imaging there is evidence of the fistula hyporesponsiveness to caloric irrigation increased postural sway with high intensity sound stimulation electrocochleography electro uh, exploratory tympanotomy which shows detection of beta 2 transferrin in the middle ear coming to peripheral vestibular paroxysmia it is a disabling positional vertigo combination of short and frequent vertigo attacks and progressive functional loss of the eighth nerve it is a short attacks of the rotational or to and fro vertigo trigger or modified by the positions auditory vestibular deficit is there and tinnitus is there uh, this type of vertigo is diagnosed by efficacy of the, with the carbamazepine and central cause should be excluded vestibular epilepsy this is a sudden rotational or linear vertigo accompanied by high head body deviation of or rotation lasting for seconds to minutes tinnitus or contralateral paresthesia is there nausea is there abnormal eeg pattern is there now vestibular migraine episodes of the road, um, uh, there are more and more patients of migraines vertigo are diagnosed nowadays episodes of rotatory to and fro vertigo lasting from seconds to days with a duration of minutes to hours increased sensitive motion during the attack and one third patient is not associated with a headache and two third of the patient are having ocular, ocular motor deficit without associated neurological deficits according to international classification we, uh, we have to diagnose many uh, that contain two or more of the following dysarthria vertigo tinnitus visual symptoms diplopia decreased hearing bilateral paresthesia bilateral paresis decrease level of consciousness in migraine of vertigo the sequence of events the occurrence of the more other more common uh, migraine symptoms at other times recurrence to the complete neurological normality in shorter time the headache following the attack and positive family history and response to the medical treatment aids in the diagnosis kogan syndrome there is a inter interstitial keratitis lacrimation eye pain and uh, increased wbc esr and fever paroxysmal room tilt illusion it is a inverted vision not vertigo or nystagm it is a inverted vision during an acute phase it is a, it is the first sign of the disease in repeated episodes in quick succession visual phenomenon is also paroxysmal patient feels inverted uh, vision suddenly inverted remain upside down for minutes to seconds and then rapidly reverted to normal patient get uh, the vision uh, may be 180 degree or rotated or 90 degree rotated there is associated nausea vomiting dizziness and malaise it is due to the lesion in midbrain or vestibulocerebellar region 
now this side shows the recurrent uh, how to proceed for the recurrent what is in a spells there is a, if there is a consciousness alter or not uh, if there is con alteration of the consciousness we have to go for mri and intensive eeg monitoring no no alteration of consciousness we have to go for family history of epilepsy neurological deficits if yes then go to this if there is no then holpaic menor positive negative BPPV, if negative, then central vestibular testing, positive, negative. If positive, then central vestibular cause, or negative, then peripheral vestibular disorder. This is the clue. Now, uh, we have to look only this for true vertigo. Sorry for this uh, type of slide. Uh, there is a false sensation of motor. Uh, if there is a true vertigo, we have the, uh, if the, we have to look for headache if it is headache then we can guess uh, think of migraine if there is no headache and only hearing loss if hearing loss is there then we have to look for meniere's disease or labyrinthitis with fever or vestibular neuronitis if there is no hearing loss then we can go for bppv and uh, we uh, by, uh, it is diagnosed by dick's hole pipe now, this is the false in some uh, particular type of diseases. <coughs> in vestibular neuritis, lateral opulsion, ocular tilt reaction, and thalamic ectasia, the patient feels lateral fall. In autolytic tulio phenomenon, lateral opulsion and vestibular epilepsy, patient feels diagonal fall. And in 4F fall, in BPPV, bilateral vestibulopathy, downbeat nystagmus, upbeat nystagmus, it is a uh, 4F fall. And uh, in Tomarkin's autolytic crisis, there is a Vertical fall. Now something regarding duration of the vertigo. If few seconds of vertigo, then it may be a peripheral cause, unit of vestibular new, uh, function loss, and acute stage of the vestibular neuritis or late stage of the migraine. If there is severe seconds to minutes, it is a BPPV or parallel fistula. It's minutes to uh, hour, then it may be a pos uh, posterior trans transient systemic attack, parallel fistula. Hours, meniere's disease, parallel fistula, migraine, and acoustic neuroma. Days, acute vestibular neuronitis, and stroke or migraine, multiple sclerosis. And weeks to months, it may be a psychogenic. This is the hints. This is the vertigo, and uh, this is the learning early phase of the physician. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank Dr. Srinivasar and Dr. Pradeep sir to give me such an opportunity. Yeah, it is the inflammation. Uh, there is a... Uh, inflammation of the fluids in the meniere's disease. So, uh, when uh, fluids become inflamed, then the um, uh, membrane rupture. In membrane rupture, the ions gets outside, and then it causes the uh, stimulation of the nerve endings. It is called me membrane rupture now, I'll say. Thank you very much for your uh, informative uh, presentation. Just one more comment uh, uh, regarding the recurrent vertiginous attacks. I have observed it clinically that is the transient ischemic attacks due to uh, posterior circulation deficiency uh, usually misdiagnosed by uh, the colleagues. Uh, you know the blood supply of the inner ear takes its blood supply from the posterior circulation blood supply. So any compromise to the posterior circulation can present by uh, ear symptoms like vertigo, like tinnitus, and even hearing loss. Uh, especially that is the uh, internal auditory artery, the tortuous artery, uh, in the artery, no collaterals. So it's very sensitive to any compromise to the posterior circulation uh, of the brain. So just keep in mind, because I have seen this, um, interestingly, one of my colleagues, he was treating his mother as Meniere's disease, and beta histidine and everything, and because she presented by vertigo attacks associated with tinnitus. And uh, he brought to me, and my final assessment was that most probably that's a case of posterior circulation transient ischemic attacks. So not every case of vertigo associated with tinnitus is a Meniere's disease. So consider other diagnosis. Thank you.